My last video, number 118, was about Witsit, who talked about specular and diffuse reflection as if he were an expert. But at the same time, he demonstrated that he didn't have a clue about what it was and what the difference between the two was. I couldn't resist the temptation to show the difference between the length of the reflection in relation to the height of the mountains that were reflected, thus demonstrating that the reflection could only be caused by curved water. I received some critic at my approach. Kara.314 said that it was bad evidence because there was no clear horizon in the pictures I showed, so I couldn't do such an image. Then read Fleming World's toughest M1394. Why in the hell have these guys such unpronounceable names? Reacts where he or she basically says that the reflection always looks shorter, also in a flat mirror, and that the effect of the mirror being bent would be very hard to detect at all. I reacted with my preliminary findings of the calculations for this video and said that the difference between the viewing angles of the mountains itself and the viewing angles of their reflection on a flat mirror was no more than 0.000015 degrees for a viewer's height of 2 meters. But both reactions had planted some doubt in whether my method was right or should be refined. I decided to walk through my calculations once again and found that the difference between the viewing angle from the observer to the mountain was much larger than I had initially calculated. First of all, I had made a calculation error, but even more importantly, I had calculated the difference at a viewing distance of 10,000 meters. If I would have taken this distance with a viewing height of 2 meters, I would have gotten in trouble with the globe cal calculations. At that distance, part of the mountains would have been obscured by the curvature of the Earth, so the calculated length of the reflection wouldn't be observed anyhow. In short, I messed up. When I do my calculations properly as good as I can, the calculations on the globe model are rather complicated, I find that the viewing angle of the reflection on a flat mirror is 0.8952 times that of the mirrored object itself, and on a curved mirror with a radius of 6371 kilometers, the viewing angle of the reflection is 0.8940 times that of the mirrored object itself. There is a difference. On a globe, the reflection is shorter, but the difference is very small. So, Reed Fleming World's toughest M1394 was absolutely right, and I was wrong. Or not. I decided to repeat a little experiment I had done in the past. I made a small mountainous view on a, on a mirror and photographed it when the mirror was flat and when I bent the mirror as much as I dared. And lo and behold, the viewing angle on the curved surface indeed was visibly smaller than it was on the flat mirror. So my thought process had been right, but the Earth was just too large to distinguish the smaller viewing angle on a flat plane from that on a curved plane. And the shift of the reflection in the photos I showed in my last video were probably caused by me misjudging the place of the horizon, or better, the mirror line of the reflection. Nevertheless, one thing stands, which it guesses it doesn't understand reflection at all nor does he know what specular and diffuse reflection is. Widget is just a human tape recorder who repeats ad nauseum everything he hears and or partially has read, although he never knows what he is talking about.